Now that you understand screen coordinates and variables, we can start to really control what is drawn on the game screen. There are several shape drawing functions in Pico8 that you should learn how to use well. These shapes will come in handy even in your bigger games for overlays, scene transitions, visual effects, and backgrounds. Or you could even make entire games by drawing just these shapes. As usual, let's start by clearing the screen. Geometry teachers always start with a single point, or in our case, a single pixel. And we have already learned how to draw a single pixel and set its color using PSET. Remember, PSET X, Y, C places a single pixel at the coordinates X and Y with the color C. For example, PSET 60, 60, 8 draws a red dot right near the center of the screen. Next, let's make a second point a little to the right and lower on the screen. PSET 80, 80, 12. And run this to see one red pixel and one blue pixel. Now let's make it easier to read by changing the hard-coded numbers to variables. In geometry, we number the different points and then refer to their X and Y coordinates with the same number to tell them apart. So the first red pixel we can name point 1 and say that it is at X1 and Y1. Then that makes the blue pixel point 2, which means we can say that it is at X2, Y2. And now we have two different sets of coordinates named in an organized and logical pattern. So let's create a variable named x1 and set it to 60. Another named y1 and set it to 60 also. And make a third variable named c1 for the color of point 1 and set it to 8. Now we can replace the hard-coded numbers in the first p set with these variable names. And do the same for point 2, with x2 set as 80, y2 set as 80, and c2 set as 12. And again, replace the numbers with the variables. Run it again to make sure it all works. And great! Now it's much easier to change these variables without digging around in the code and trying to remember what numbers mean what. And we can simply use these same variables for multiple shapes we want to draw. The next thing we learn in geometry is that we can connect the two points, and the shortest distance between the two points is a straight line. We can easily draw lines to the screen using a function, appropriately named line. Let's write line, open and close parentheses, and let's learn the data that it needs inside the parentheses. All lines have a starting point and an end point. So this function needs the starting points x and y coordinates, then the ending points x and y coordinates, and lastly, the color number. We can easily use the variables of the two points that we already made. So inside of the parentheses, the starting points coordinates are x1, y1, and the end point coordinates are x2, y2. And let's make it a different color, 7. Run this, and we now have a white line being drawn between our two points. Actually, it's drawn over the two points, which is why we don't see them anymore. This is important to understand before we start drawing many shapes on the screen. There aren't any layers in a Pico 8 screen. What is drawn on top is simply what is drawn last. So in our code, we are drawing this pixel, then the second pixel, then the line. But we are only seeing the line because the line has been drawn on top and covering the two pixels. If we change the order of the code and move this line up above the pixels and run it now, we can see the two points again because they are drawn on top of the line. This is called the draw order, and you'll want to keep this in mind when planning out how to draw things in your game. The code is run from top to bottom and drawn in that order. So it's like layers where you can rearrange what is drawn behind or in front by what order they are drawn in the draw order. Next, let's jump into the available shapes to draw, where the draw order will really start to matter. And instead of writing new code at the bottom, we'll actually write it above the rest to draw it in the background so we can still see the lines and points on top. First up, rectangles. Just like lines, rectangles only need to be given two points, 
Even though rectangles have four corners, we only need two opposite corners to know where the other two corners are. Let me show you. If we take our two points here as the opposite corners, then I can figure out where the other two corners are. For the bottom left corner, I just need to start at the first corner's x and follow it straight down until I get to the opposite corner's y. So the point of this corner is x1, y2. And to figure out the last corner, the logic is the same. But this time we keep the same y and move to the right until we get to the opposite corner's x. So this corner is at x2 and y1. That's how we only need two points to easily draw any rectangle. The name of the rectangle drawing function is rect, and it takes the same data as line did, two sets of coordinates and a color. In fact, it's easy to just duplicate what we wrote for drawing a line, move it up, and change from drawing a line to drawing a rect. Finally, let's change the color to set it apart. Three should be a dark green. There we go. And it's easy to change the size of the rectangle by moving the coordinates of the two points. Let's make it a little bigger by just moving the top left corner closer to the top left corner of the screen, which means we decrease the numbers here. How about 40x and 50y? Run it now, and it's not only bigger, but it's a more traditional rectangle now and not a perfect square anymore. Notice that the points in the corners followed along with our changes to the variables and the line connecting the two points is a bit jagged. Pico 8 will do its best to draw lines as straight as possible, and sometimes that will result in interesting patterns on a screen size this small. As you can see, this rectangle is only drawing the lines along the outside of the shape while the inside is empty. Pico 8 provides another function for filling in a rectangle, which you can easily remember because it's named Rect Fill. It works just like Rect, but fills the entire rectangle with color. So we can just duplicate our rectangle and rename it Rect Fill. And instead of a dark green, let's use a light green, number 11. Run this, and now we have a fully drawn and filled in rectangle. If we want the outline to appear, then we just need to go back in the code and draw the filled rectangle before the outline rectangle. So the outline will be drawn on top. There we go. And with just these two rectangles, I bet you can imagine using this in your game for an overlay or displaying scores or dialog boxes. Let's save our progress so far. Save, space, slash, nerdy, slash, and let's name it Shapes1. So when you explore drawing more shapes on your own, you can save them as Shapes2, 3, etc. Enter to save it to our nerdy folder and now it's safe for you to experiment as much as you'd like. Pause the video here and take some time to play around with drawing points, lines, rectangles, and squares all over your screen. If you like what you created, save it as Shapes 2, and when you're ready to continue this lesson, simply load nerdy slash shapes1, and you'll be back to the same code I have here. All right, let's continue. The next shape is an oval, because it uses the same data that lines and rectangles use, just two points and a color. This time, let's draw our oval on top of the rectangle. So I'll copy these three rectangle lines of code, paste them underneath, and these will become our ovals. You've probably already guessed it, but the name for the oval drawing function is simply oval. And to draw a filled in oval, it's oval fill. Before we run it though, Let's change the color to set them apart from our green rectangles. How about a brown border and an orange inside? That's four and nine. The border will be four and the inside will be nine. Now let's run it. And there we have our orange ovals on green rectangles with a white line connecting the red point with the blue point. And all of these shapes are using the coordinates of just these two points. So by layering shapes, filled and outlined, you can make some fantastically complex shapes in your game and make people wonder how you even did it. Before we move on to the final shape, you should know that ovals work similarly to rectangles. If we set the two points so that all sides of the rectangle are equal, like 40-40 and 80-80, 
it creates a square and the ovals create circles. And this is also when the line is drawn perfectly straight diagonally. The beauty of geometry. So it's possible to draw circles with the oval functions. Or you can make sure they always stay circles with the circle functions. Circles are a little unique, which is why we saved them for the last. First, we need to understand two important concepts, center point and radius. The word center point is nice and easy because it describes exactly what it is. It's the point at the exact center of any circle. All sides of the circle are the same distance from its center point, and that distance has a name. Radius is the distance from a circle's center point to its edge. In Pico8, we use the circ function to draw circles. It needs one point with xy coordinates to be the center point and that will control the position of the circle. Then it needs a radius to know how big of a circle to draw. And finally, a color number. In code, the circle drawing functions are circ and circ fill, and they both require the same data. Let's write it out using specific numbers instead of our variables. Circ, and inside of parentheses, we'll draw it at 6060, give it a radius of 10 pixels, and use dark purple number two. Run it, and this draws a circle at the center of our other shapes. It's much easier to change the size of a circle because it's just one number here, the radius. If we try something like 30, then we get a larger circle outside of the rest. So how about we try 15? Looks good, but I don't like fiddling with the numbers inside of parentheses like this. So let's create a variable for the radius. The letter R is the common abbreviation for that. So R equals 15, and use R here. Run it, and good, that works. Now, just like the other shapes, we can also draw it filled in with circ fill. So let's duplicate circ, change the name to circ fill, and change the color to eight, red. All these shapes layered on top of each other looks pretty cool like we designed a floor tile or a flag. Now, I've got a line of villagers hoping you can help them out with some more side quests, but there's an important skill you need to learn first to make all these tasks easier. So I'll save them for the next lesson. For now, just take this time to freely play with drawing all these different types of shapes to the screen. You might even be able to draw a whole scene if you're dedicated enough. Give it a try and master using screen coordinates and variables to draw shapes exactly where you want them on the screen. You already know print, so you can even add words on top. We'd love to see what you create, so share it on the social media of your choice with the hashtag Pico8. You can even tag us, at Nerdy Teachers, to make sure we see it. Get creative, have fun, and let's thank our coffee supporters that are allowing us to make more videos and offer them for free. Welcome new members, and thank you for being a part of this. To join up and get extra content, visit our website, nerdyteachers.com.